Hello and welcome back to our cottage garden and wishing you a happy May. Um, I can't quite believe that it's May already, um, but here we are. It's been a little while since we last did a video for you and we've had some really, really exciting things on, um, but it has meant we've been extremely busy. So I think quite a lot's changed since I last showed you around. So I've got so many things that I can't wait to show you, um, including this amazing Clematis Montana. Um, but before we get into that, we do have a sponsor for this video and I really enjoyed putting this together. So I hope you enjoy. So we're moving into garden party season now and I thought I would make some party favours in the form of customised herb pots. And I made these using my Cricut and this is the Cricut Joy. It's actually my first one and this was a really good one for kind of getting to grips with Cricut and learning how to use it. I found it very straightforward um, and these are my tools. I used the Cricut Design Space app to find some pre-made garden labels because I'm a beginner so I didn't want to jump straight in in the deep end and make things myself. I thought I'll try some that are already on Design Space. And there were so many to choose from, um, but I found these lovely herb labels and I just knew straight away that these were the ones I wanted to use. So I figured out what size I want my designs to be and then I sent them to be cut. And the Design Space lays them out in the most economic way so you don't waste too much vinyl. And I'm using Smart Vinyl which was really cool because it has a built-in mat so you don't need to use a Cricut mat at all it's really quick you can just pop it in the machine and it will cut out your designs for you and I was so excited to try this because it was my first time using a Cricut and I just thought it was so clever it does it so quickly and it's so intricate so that thing that you can see moving around there is basically a tiny little knife and it's copying the designs that are on the computer and cutting them into the vinyl for me I just think it's so clever I really enjoyed watching it I should apologise for using white vinyl because you can't really see what's being cut out but if you use colours you can see it cutting out the shapes and it's much more interesting to watch. But nonetheless, um, once it's finished you can peel off your excess vinyl and you can then see your design on the backing strip and it comes to life at this stage and I found this so satisfying, just the process of removing the excess vinyl. And once you've pulled off this kind of main sheet you can use your little needle tools and your scraper tools to pick out the kind of intricate so the bits that are inside the letters, so I think that was inside a letter E, and then there's me pulling out possibly the inside of the letter G as well. Um, but again, a really satisfying process. And I just cut them down into um, individual labels so they were easier to manage. And next I cut out some transfer tape to go on top of these. And basically you use the transfer tape to kind of make a sticker out of your design. So I scraped the transfer tape on there just to make sure it was really picking up my design and then peeled away the backing and this is when you can see it as a sticker. And again, really satisfying because you can see it all coming together. And then I very carefully used the scraper tool to make sure my sticker was going to the pot. And I did wash these pots beforehand as well to make sure that they were really clean and things would stick onto it easily. And then the um, big finale is when you can peel off your transfer tape and look at what you've made. And I love these, they were so easy and simple to make. And it's just a nice way of adding a little personal touch to your gifts. But I think that's it. I am hooked on Cricut now and I've got so many other things that I want to try making after this. Um, but be sure to visit the link in my description where you can see the Cricut shop and see what products are on offer. I really enjoyed this. So if you do use Cricut yourself, let me know what you think I should try next. So now let's have a look around the garden. Um, and this is our mostly herb garden, but there's a few non-edible things down here that I really want to show you. So this is our Clematis Montana. Um, and I think this is about three years old now and it's looking really amazing. You can see it's got a lot of new growth on it. So I will have to go around with some secateurs. I might grab some in a minute and um, start pruning things while I'm showing you around because I haven't had much time to do gardening in the last couple of weeks. So um, things do look quite, um, uh, busy I guess you could say um, and then behind us we have um, the tulips are queen of night and those have been in for two years I think they flowered before possibly even three years I think I remember making a video about those in 2020 um, and it's kind of a miracle that they're reflowering there because that is a really damp bed and um, tulips are known for not liking damp and so they're unlikely to reflower if they're in that situation. Um, but I think that's why the ones that are on the sunniest part of the bed have come back. And then as we move that way, there's less of them. Um, and we've also got this Narcissus, which is called Sweet Love. Um, this is a new one. So I put this in last year and it's just about to go over. So that's another thing I'm gonna come out here and deadhead in a minute. Um, 
but I've been amazed at how long that's flowered for. I think it's been about three weeks and only in the last couple of days has it just started looking a little bit tatty. So really pleased with that. Um, and then in our herb garden, everything's waking up again. So we've got some mint down here. We've got rosemary, we've got thyme and we've got lavender. And um, as I've mentioned before, my aim with this area is to have things that are really close to the kitchen that I can just pop out here and grab them and use them in my food. Um, and then the steps are coming back to life as well, which is lovely. Um, so I let things self seed here and I do also add, um, I've been adding some erigeron and in the summer this looks amazing. So I can't wait to show you this in summer, but the things that have self seeded, um, we actually have an aqualegia, which is quite strange, found its way into the steps um, and that will probably get quite big, but I'm gonna leave it in because I think it's lovely. Um, it does get in the way a little bit, but I love aqualegias and I just don't want to pull it out. And you can also see around me, forget me not self seed here amazingly. And one of my favorite things is when they find their way into a wall like up there and um, it's somewhere that it might be kind of difficult to plant them yourself, but if you let things move around, they pop up in all sorts of places. Um, and same story below me, this primrose that, that's self seeded here and the soil there seems really shallow. So you feel it would be difficult to plant something there but it's found its way there and it's looking really happy. Um, so this area is full of life again and just love it. I think it will only get better over the next few weeks as the Erigeron starts to flower. But let's move up the garden now and I can show you what else is going on. In the first bit of our garden, we've got this amazing Wajila shrub currently flowering and the bees really love this one, but it's so beautiful and I just love that pink colour. This is one of my favourite times of year, um, especially when you can see the forget-me-nots popping up around the garden as well. And there's just such a lovely kind of clashing but soft colours, colour scheme going on. Um, you can see we are currently embracing No Mo May and um, if you're not familiar with it, that just means that you stop mowing the lawn or you mow the lawn less um, for the benefit of insects and pollinators and whatever wants to live in the long grass. Um, we do usually mow paths when we're doing no mow may, but this time our lawn mower has completely broken. So it's gone in to be repaired and it's going to be about two weeks until we get it back. So we are wholeheartedly embracing no mow may this year, not mowing a single thing. Um, we probably will put some paths back in once we get our lawnmower just for the dogs and for us um, and we don't want to get ticks on our legs when we're out here and things. So that's why we do like to keep some bits tidy and some bits long but at the moment you can see everything is um, really really long and I, I do usually tidy up the garden a little bit before I make YouTube videos but I haven't had time um, this, on this occasion so this is quite an honest representation of what the garden's like this time of year but um, I have been learning to embrace the kind of wild side of the garden and last week um, I went on a day course about polyculture and it's kind of changed my perception of the garden and of mess and one thing I'm trying to work towards is not seeing weeds as a bad thing um, but actually seeing bare soil as the worst thing in a garden and I was getting there slowly um, and making sure that I always have a mulch down or some kind of ground cover plant. But um, more so now, I think I'm gonna try and make sure there's a living mulch on the soil. So a plant that acts as ground cover rather than a mulch of compost or straw or something like that. So that's uh, something I've been learning about recently and found really, really interesting. And even outside of No Mo May, um, we do have a lot of areas of the garden that we leave completely wild. We leave um, stacks of logs or tiles or places that insects might want to live in. Um, so it's something that you can do all year round and just embracing mess is usually a really, really good thing. Um, and one of the reasons that we do that also is just because when I'm gardening, I'm only one person and this is quite a big space. So um, whether or not we wanted to, we have to leave parts a bit messy because I just don't have time to keep everything tightly manicured. But you can definitely see that the wildlife love it. And yesterday I was even sat at the top of the garden with a cup of tea and I noticed a tiny little vole came and sat next to me just for a little second. And that was so sweet. Um, and I definitely feel less angry about creatures eating my peas and vegetables um, when you get to see them just enjoying themselves in the garden it's really really lovely um, but let's move up the garden and I'll keep showing you around so here we are at the cutting patch of tulips and most of them are in flower now um, we're still waiting for one called black hero 
and I can see um, one of them's just started flowering but it's still a little bit too early. Um, but everything else is flowering and these are just a mix of some of my favourite um, peony flowering tulips. Um, so they've got these lovely ruffled double petals and I just think they're so lovely. And the flowers do look a lot like peonies and um, in this bed I find that they last for quite a long time because it's semi-shade so they don't go over too quickly as well. So I love um, just sitting out here and looking at them this time of year. I think they're so pretty. Um, and once these are flowered, I will remove the bulbs because they're not likely to return next year. Um, so if you have any ideas of what to use this bed for, um, please do let me know. I think it must have initially been a seed bed or something, um, but it's very shady now once we move into summer because the trees will get their leaves back. So I can just about grow tulips here in spring, um, but in summer, not really sure what to do with it. Um, and obviously we've got the ducks here as well. So plants that are kind of softer or more prone to being eaten by ducks might not uh, fare so well here either. So this bed is a bit of a mystery to me and this is an area that you may remember I've been building up gradually and we did have an opportunity to put loads more plants in here recently and um, our local wholesale nursery which is usually open to the trade has one weekend in spring where they're open to the public so um, we went there and bought about 50 plants um, they were two pounds each so really good value for nine centimeter pots but lots of them had really strong root systems so could go straight into the ground um, and i finished filling out this area um, for the time being so i've added japanese anemones i've added geraniums which have just started flowering I've got two types of geraniums. Um, one is a pink one, um, which I've forgotten the name of, and then we've just got the purple kind of native variety that you see more often. And I've added some Japanese anemones to this bed too. And this is a bit of a trial for me because this is kind of quite shady into the summer. Um, I know they don't mind a bit of dapple shade, but I'm interested to see if they'll flower here. Um, so this area is looking amazing now. We've obviously got our hellebores, primroses, um, and bluebells that have self-seeded here too. Um, they are hybrid bluebells, um, so they're not the native English variety. They're a mix between um, the native variety and the Spanish variety. Um, so they are still really, really lovely, um, but maybe need to be a bit careful about how those spread. Um, I, at the moment, haven't decided to remove them just because all of the neighbours have them all over the garden and I think if I try they will keep coming back so I want to embrace them. Um, my gut feeling is that they're probably better than nothing, they're still a hybrid and the, you do still see pollinators using them um, but if you are a bluebell expert feel free to let me know about what you think I should do if I've got hybrid bluebells popping up everywhere um, but they really are getting all over the place and it's quite amazing to see where they decide to grow and I do think they're beautiful. I'm really happy with how this area is coming along. Another thing I bought at the plant sale was some erigeron and it's not the um, standard kind that you see that's a white and pink colour. It's a purple one and it's called Lavender Lady and they were really small plug plants so I've just popped them into some gaps on the steps there and I'm hoping that they um, take over those steps as they have done down there. Um, I'd be interested to see what happens because I do also have some of the normal erigeron here as well um, so we might have a bit of purple, a bit of white and pink, um, we'll see what happens but I love erigeron and I really like how you can make a flowering space that's good for the insects on concrete or in a wall or on stone. I think that's such a valuable thing to have in the garden and soften the edges a bit so can't wait to see that. Um, again lots of things to look forward to here um, but let's go and look at the flower borders next. This year I've got loads of annuals that I'm trying to grow from seed if I can get past the slug damage. I'm going to try and fill out the space in these with things like cosmos um, while I'm buying perennials that will eventually take up the space. Um, but because I'm someone that focuses more on really early spring and late kind of middle spring, um, these tend to look a little bit neglected this time of year. Um, I'm going to go and do some deadheading. We, we do have alliums in here um, and these are just about to flower. They've got um, the heads on the top that are getting bigger every day. Um, these are in fact Mount Everest. I think last time I told you they weren't <laughs> but I checked my receipts and they are in fact Mount Everest. So those will look really lovely next time I show you round. And the same story with the peonies, um, the oriental poppies. They're all things that will be flowering very soon and then once those are done, I'll look to add some summer interest to these borders. Um, there's some things I want to take out too. So this area on the whole is hopefully going to have a bit of a makeover soon um, or be enhanced without removing too much. Um, but I'm just going to start some deadheading now and we can get this looking a little bit tidier at least. So 
So I'm just deadheading the last of my tulips now um, and I cut these as far back as I can go whilst leaving the leaves on. Um, so a bit of the stem will stay just so I can keep as many leaves as possible. And that will encourage the tulips to come back next year. And these um, tulips, Ivory Floridale, they're a Darwin hybrid. And in my experience, the Darwin hybrids do come back quite well in this part of the garden. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed, um, but with tulips, you kind of never know. Sometimes they come back really well and other times they don't, even if you expect them to, um, but that's the plan. And I will give these a feed as well. Um, I'll just feed them with a liquid seaweed feed um, or comfrey if I can get that ready in time, but probably not. It will probably be seaweed and that should just help them get really big and strong as well. So there you go, that's the tulips deadheaded from these borders. I think they look a lot tidier now, although there's not much going on in them. We're kind of ready for that next flush of flowers, which will be poppies, alliums, peonies, and those sorts of things. Um, so I've taken care of that. I think next I can show you our vegetables and the orchard is looking amazing at the moment. So we're in the veg garden now. Um, I've had to just pick up the boy duck because he was biting my legs. He um, gets a bit aggressive this time of year, um, but I'll let him go now and hopefully he'll go and join the girls without being too bothered. There we go. <laughs> um, there's loads to show you here. Our asparagus is all coming up now. So we've got an early bed that we've been harvesting and the late asparagus bed has started coming up too. Um, my comfrey is coming up so I'm going to be making fertilizer with that soon as well um, and basically I'm just going to cut it all down, put it in a bucket of water with a brick on it, cover it and then leave it to kind of infuse um, and then in a couple of weeks time that should be ready to water down and add back to the beds and that should add some nutrients to the soil. Everything in here is doing really well. I put my cup and saucer plants onto the arches to, to um, hopefully cover these this year and um, my logic was the things I've got here that I want to cover it permanently are quite slow growing whereas the cup and saucer plant should be about five meters long in this one year and then it won't survive the winter so it will die um, so I'm hoping that will give us a kind of temporary cover and help use up the space on these arches. We've also got our elephant garlic here. I've added sweet peas to this area. I've sown some carrots directly into the soil. The chives are all coming up and they look like they're gonna flower. Rhubarb's massive. The tay berries are massive. Um, they've got loads of flower heads on. So thankfully this year we should get a harvest from those because they're a new addition. We didn't have any last year. And everything is kind of ticking over as it should. And the orchard is looking amazing. So I'm just gonna walk you through that next. So here we are in the orchard and this is our absolute best example of what Momo May can do. And um, at the moment we've got this cow parsley, which we have every year. It comes up really tall and it's just amazing, lovely frothy stuff. Um, and then below that we've got the hedge vetch, um, some buttercups, some forget-me-nots, some poppies that are starting to appear, um, some bluebells as well, um, all sorts of things. And you can see already there's so many insects here. Um, they really love this space. and the fruit trees are flowering at the moment as well and the apple blossom is so lovely I just think this is the best time of year up here. The two apple trees at the back are probably the ones that look the best. The cherry has just finished and then we've got a lilac as well so there are so many lovely blossoms up here at the moment. Um, not great for Aaron's hay fever but wonderful in all sorts of other ways. If you remember a couple of videos ago, I added some oriental poppies to try and um, get some perennial flowers in the ground here. And those are looking like they're about to flower. Um, the heads on them are about this big. So I'm reckoning next time I show you around, we can see what those look like too. We did buy an extra probably 20 oriental poppies from the plant sale that we went to. <laughs> the ducks are just coming down. I'm gonna get out of their way. Hi ducks. Apologies about that, I really lost my train of thought when the ducks came through. Um, but the main message is I just wanted to show you this space and enjoy um, all of the May goodness up here. It's just lovely and this is a place where I do sit with a cup of tea and watch the sun set because the sun sets last here in the garden so you can stay out here really late and just listen to pollinators and crickets and things. It's super lovely. I do have a few things to show you in the polytunnel um, so you can see what to expect in terms of our fruit and veg this year. So I'm gonna show you that next. 
The polytunnel, like the borders down there, is in a bit of an in-between stage at the moment. We have had such a cold spring this year that my tomatoes are really behind where I'd like them to be. Um, I think they will catch up and in the last few days they have started looking much better because the nights have warmed up, but it does mean they aren't planted out into the ground yet um, when I would like them to be. So I'll be potting them on. Um, they're just about ready to be potted on. And then hopefully after that, I can get them in the ground. Um, everything else that we grew in here from last year is going, going to seed now. So we've got lettuces, parsley, um, some chard there. So we'll continue to harvest off those, but I am gonna leave them in the ground and let them go to seed. I'm gonna save some of the seeds, but also just let the pollinators come in and use them. And then I will leave the roots in the ground as well so that they can help with the soil structure and not disturb that too much. The only heat loving plant that I've managed to get in and that's doing okay is the aubergines. Again they are kind of on the small side just because of how cold it's been but they are surviving and I think they will catch up um, but it has been a slow start this year um, and I'm only just finding that my squash and bean seedlings are germinating too. It's taken ages for it to be warm enough for them to actually sprout out of the soil, but that has started. So we're gonna be kind of getting into that momentum very soon. And hopefully this will be full of plants next time I show you round. But there you go. I hope you've enjoyed having a look around the garden today and having a look at some of the amazing May things that are just appearing everywhere. Um, let me know if you're also doing no more May because I'd love to know how that's going for you, uh, what you're doing and if it's the first time you've done it. Um, now that we have finished our big projects um, that are a surprise, but one of them is really exciting and I will tell you about it as soon as I can. Um, we hopefully should have more time to spend in the garden. So I'm hoping to actually make some progress out here over the next couple of weeks. And next time you can see these alliums as well. So um, thanks for watching. And if you're interested in how our cottage garden develops over the months and years, be sure to give us a subscribe.